Turn your Bible to Psalm 92. Mm. Psalm 92. I, I like, let me sit by you for just a minute right there. I like the way she, when the preacher said, has anybody got anything on you, you got to say. I liked her response. It wasn't, it wasn't somebody going to have to drop a hook in here and put a battery on her and right. charge her up. Right. She said, yeah. I'm, yeah. That, that should be the reaction. Right. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. You say, I, and I, I, God help us. I was trying to my best to preach out of Mark 5 tonight. But the preacher said, anybody got it? She said, I want to give, I want to say, and again, I want to thank the Lord. Man, maybe, I know it's, we're not at Thanksgiving anymore, but maybe we need to have a Thanksgiving meeting. Amen. Really, every church service ought to be a Thanksgiving meeting. Amen. I wonder how thankful we are for our church. How thankful are you for your family and your church and your preacher and the Bible? I mean, when's the last time you just picked your Bible up? And you said, Lord, I just want to thank you for my... You say, they were just singing about it, but I did say. You, you know where I get a hold of what he did say? Between them two covers right there. Amen. Amen. I told you, it ain't the, it's not the liquor crowd that's affecting us, and it's not the contemporary crowd. It's not the sodomites that are affecting our service. It's us. It's us. I mean, last time, when's the last time you got down before the Lord... And you got down in a prayer time, your prayer closet, and you just got down and you didn't ask for anything. Yeah, yeah. You didn't ask for nothing. Right. You just got down there and said, Lord, today yeah. I've come to say thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Man, Brother Mark Wheeler, my friend, at, and the kids have sang with him at camp. He wrote the song, I've not always been faithful, but he has. Yeah. And uh, he written many good songs. He wrote one just this last summer. Lord, more like you. Lord, more like you. You talking about convicting. That's convicting. I remember as I'm going to get in the Bible. Don't worry. We're going to look a whole lot. We're going to look a whole lot about what the Psalms. If I told you to turn to the hymn book of your Bible, would you know where to turn to? You realize our King James Bible has a built-in hymn book. It's from Psalm 1 to Psalm 150. If I told you to take your Bible hymn book and turn to 92, now if I tell you to turn to 92 in the church hymnal, it'd be just a little talk with Jesus. But if I told you to turn to 92 in your hymn book of your Bible, we'd be where we're going to be in just a moment. But I remember walking up on Brother Mark's, and him and Miss Joy hadn't been married too long, too many years. I don't even know if Sarah Grace, but I guess Sarah Grace had been born. And uh, I walked up on the plat on his porch and and the, Miss Joy was gone, and he said, I, I knocked on his door, and he's coming out. I said, Brother Mark, I'm sorry to disturb you. I, I don't want to hinder you from something. He said, oh, no, preacher. He, he, he said, I'm just going down to the praising post. And I thought, praising post. Now, I've been to the prayer grounds with him. Down there in a the pine thicket, he, he, he's he got him a little bench down in there, and he, he, he bush hogs a place where he can go down there it away from everything and pray. And me and I have been down there on multiple occasions to pray. But I thought, man, I've never been to the praising post. I'm interested in that. I said, I'll go with you. So we walked down, we walked down through the prayer grounds, right on the backside of the prayer grounds, down into the woods, down to a creek near where the pasture fence was. An old rusted out metal fence post. And I thought, well, I wonder where we're headed. And Brother Mark said, we're here, preacher. I thought at this metal fence post. He said, yeah, this is what I call the praising post. He said, when I go to the prayer grounds, I'm trying to intercede and ask the Lord to answer some prayers. He said, but every once in a while, I just need to come down here. And he said, I stand here at this post and I just put my hand. Ain't no magic in it. It's just a place he had designated for this. He said, I put my hand on the post and I just make my mind up that I've come to praise God. 
He said, so you want to go, you want to just praise God together, preacher? I said, I believe I do. He said, well, won't you just get a hold of this post and we'll just start praising the Lord together. And Brother Mike, we put our hands on that post and oh, Brother Mark said, Lord, I've just come to say thank you. Man, I, he got to thanking God and I got to thanking God. And man, it wasn't about 90 seconds. He was about 100 yards down the creek. I was about 100 yards up the creek. I wasn't caring what he was saying and he was didn't care what I said. You say, well, that's real strange. Where in the world did a preacher find you? Amen. I, I tell you what, it helped me. There's, I made it a point of my Christian life. Uh, there's times that I go that I don't say, Lord, I need you. I need you to move in this situation. I, but Lord, I've come to say thank you today. I've come to lift up your name. I've come to thank you for the word of God. I've come to thank you for the Holy Ghost that lives in me. I thank you for the church. I thank you for eternal salvation. I thank you that your name is wonderful and it's counselor and it's the mighty God and it's the everlasting Father and it's the Prince of Peace. I thank you that I've got a promise that the trumpet's gonna sound and the dead in Christ will rise first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, may I just go to thank you. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. You ever done that? Yeah. Just going somewhere and say, Lord, it didn't come for a thing. Right. I've just come to say thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look at your Bible. Psalm 92, 1. Boy, you want to learn how to worship God. The book of Psalms is a great book. It's a book of public worship. Notice what Psalm 92.1 said. It's a good thing. You realize what you just did? It's a good thing. Sir, you know what you just did? It was a good thing. You know what you did last night? It's a good thing. Amen. And you others that testified, it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. I promise you, you can go back there. Some of you thinking, this guy just don't study. There's, there's 5,000, literally, 5,000 outlines in that, in that iPad right back there. Most of them are mine. Some of them may be Brother Doug's. <laughs> Maybe Brother Mike's. Some Brother Willard's. Some Brother Edgar's. I've got some written hand. But I didn't come to jump through hoops. I mean, I can get up there and I could have preached and you'd have never known. I wasn't in the will of God, but I'd have known. Amen. Listen, it's a good thing. To give thanks to the Lord Amen. and sing praises unto, his, unto thy name, yeah. O Most High. Yeah. You say, well, bless God, we got to have some preaching. Let me just say something. Y'all aren't preaching scarce around here. He sends me more preaching on a Sunday morning text than I hear a lot of times on radio programs. Amen. I mean, he sends me that text and he goes through his notes and man, I've read those. I've read the devotions that he sends online. I mean, y'all are not preaching starved. Amen. But every once in a while, that preaching, that truth that he sold in your heart ought to take wings and it ought to take root and it ought to listen, that Holy Ghost, that word that goes in ought to hit the bottom and it ought to come back up in a witness and in a testimony and in a worship of the heart of the child of God. It's a good thing. Don't, don't, don't think I'm belittling preaching. I'm a preacher. I'll preach at the drop of the hat and throw the hat down. These guys, well, I didn't come to preach. I would give you a pug nickel for a preacher who don't want to preach. Right, right. Amen. Yeah, right. I'm more interested in the will of God being done. Yeah, right, right. He said it's a good thing. Is that what it said? A good thing. It's a good thing. Psalm 100. Make a joyful. You know what they tell me that Psalm 100 was saying? Psalm, was, Psalm 100 was saying after the very last of those Levitical offerings, 
I preached out of Leviticus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. I used that old hymn from years ago. Lead me to Calvary, lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thy love for me. Lead me to Calvary. That peace offering, that thank offering was the last offering. And that's when they tell me that they sang Psalm 100. At the end, at the end of all those offerings, they said, make a joyful noise. All ye lands, serve the Lord. With, can I tell you, at the finished work of Christ, uh, no more sin offering, no more burn offering uh, uh, but you and I after all that sacrifice was over uh, you and I can make a joyful noise uh, unto the Lord our sin debt has been marked fully played uh, uh, not by the blood of bulls and goats uh, uh, but with a lamb without spot uh, and without blemish friend our sin was paid for serve the Lord with gladness hey look at here this is what gladness looks like I preached to some folks that make a freight train, take a dirt road, praise God. You watch them choirs sing, you want why can't they sing? If y'all was looking at what they were looking at, they may not sing, you might not sing either. I got a button on my shirt tonight. I do that much. I may not. Gladness. You know what she just testified with? Gladness. You know what he's always preached with? Gladness. Ever since I was a young man 22, 25 years ago when we met, he's always preached with joy in his soul. Oh, Brother Willard, Psalm 32, 11. Be glad in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. You say I don't have anything to be happy about. Preacher, you don't know what my burden is. Let me tell you something, friend. Uh, you didn't work, uh, wake up in hell today. Uh, you didn't wake up under the condemnation of God. Uh, uh, you didn't wake up uh, in the pit of fire. Uh, uh, but the grace of God uh, has been bestowed in your life today. You've got something to be glad about. Yes, sir. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence. You say, why do you have singing? Because the Bible said to have some singing. Know you that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we are ourselves. We are sheep or people. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. You ever wonder why sometimes we don't we come to church, but we don't get in. Yeah. Yeah. There is a difference. Yeah. I had a young man tell me today, he, I, I don't see any fruit, any spiritual evidence that he's right with God. And I'm not his judge, but I'm his pastor. And he said, well, I'm still reading. And I'm still praying. I said, is there any spirit in it? I said, is there any yielding in it? Is there any submission in it? Are you yielding to what you're reading? I said, it ain't got no spirit to it. I said, you pray all you want to. There's a difference of praying in the Holy Ghost. That's not charismatic. That's King James Bible. Amen. This is the confidence we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, we know that he heareth us. Man, I'm telling you, praying in the Holy Ghost, building up your faith, there's a difference. I'll say to you, there's a difference of coming to church and getting in. I mean, I go to church, I mean, man, you worry about places you go that everybody backs in their parking place. They're ready to get out. I come to get in. Enter into its gates with thanksgiving. You don't think if about half this crowd got real thankful that the Holy Ghost wouldn't show up. You couldn't keep him out. Amen. I get it. I preach in some places where if it gets on a little bit, y'all understand what I mean when it gets on. I know a lot in Michigan where they say it's on. 
No, it's O. O, like O, 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 N. O. Or O, W, N. And they get nervous. And they, don't, they, they, don't, they don't know what to do with it. But it can get so far out there, they can't do anything with it. Why? I wonder if you'd get in tonight. If you'd take your eyes off the one prayer that he's not answered and thank him for the five, 10,000 that he has answered. Wish you'd take your eyes off the one burden that you're still carrying and thank God for the 50 that he's already lifted this year. You take your eyes off of the one that disappointed you and thank God for the hundred that are still walking faithfully and the ones that have fallen by the way and thank God there's still some standing for the truth. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Here's what she did just a minute ago. She was thankful unto him and blessed his name. Amen. Man, when I, I hear you shout, you remind me of Brother Daniel Freed. You don't know him. Y'all, y'all even one of you been in, been in church, Brother Freed, Hope of Israel Baptist Missions. And he got that. There's something about the, the cadence of how you, you do it and what you say. That, and that, that's a compliment. That's a compliment. That's not a criticism. That's a compliment. You get a saying, his holy name. Amen. How many times did brother say, hey, Brother Mark, oh, yes. Bless his holy name. I'm not mocking him, praise God. He was a hero. Amen. Walked in the Holy Ghost. Are you listening? I guarantee you, when we get to heaven, them hallelujahs and bless his holy name will do over there. Amen. Ain't a lot of things get praised on this side. Ain't going to get praised over there. But that hallelujah, bless his holy name. Thank God for the lamb. Thank God for salvation. Holy, holy, holy. That's going to make it in up there. And we're going to do it over there. I'm going to be in practice over here. Somebody say, y'all got a worship leader at church? We sure do. You're looking at it. Amen. You ain't got to have some long-haired hippie with a perm and a pair of short britches and a flip-flop and a Martin guitar and some crystal up piano to have a worship leader. He's the worship leader at a Baptist church and he's the least worship leader at the Living Waters camp. Amen. I'm telling you, I told our young people, I said, if you want to shout, whether I feel it or not, I'm going to worship with you. He's done enough for me, feel it or not. I'm going to praise God. Amen. Some of you wait until the stars line up. All your burdens are lifted. There's no struggles. There's no failures. If you're waiting on them to praise God, you'll never get to. I don't see that. I don't see all them qualifications in that in that verse. I just thought it said, "Be thankful unto Him and bless His name." You say, why? I'm glad you want to know. The next verse said, for the Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting. That's what the Bible said. Are you listening to me? Look at Psalm, 10, look at Psalm 103. Psalm 103 verse 1. Bless the Lord. Amen. Try that. Everybody look at me. David said, I'll lift my hands. See, people say, well, preacher, I'm just not emotional. Let me help them see it. I refereed high school basketball in the state of Georgia for 15 years, and I umpired high school and college baseball for a lot of years. And all them places I used to preach in, that were dead as a hammer. And if somebody died and you called 911, it took them 45 minutes to figure out which one was dead. Hello? I mean, I'm talking about them places. It was so cold. If you had a milk cow in there, she'd have gave popsicles before you got her to the communion table. Everybody okay? I'm talking about ice box cold. 
Amen. Amen. I didn't say reverent. I said dead. Twice plucked up, dead. Yeah, see, I preached in some of them churches when I first got started. I'd, I'd go to the ball game on Saturday night and referee, and they'd scream at me. And then they couldn't even grunt on Sunday. I'm not a emotional preacher. You let me call a foul on little Susie that you didn't like, and all of a sudden, them little places right there start popping out in their neck and the, red, the, the blood starts coming out of their collar and their lips turn purple and they're red for, and man they're screaming amen oh they're emotional they're just not emotional about the things of God amen amen David said I lift my hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord you know what that looks like Bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Well, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Can I say it this way and be real plain? If you've never embarrassed your flesh in church, you probably never worship God. Would you agree with that, Brother Mike? Would you agree with me, preacher? If you've never, you know what? Back in the back six, I mean, I pastor, y'all pray for us. I pastor a brand, we're a, we're a young church. In October, we just celebrated our 204th anniversary, so y'all pray for us. We're just getting started. Amen. Shubal Burns, it got saved under, under the, the Great Awakening. In North Carolina, North Carolina, Sandy Creek, North Carolina. They sent missionaries, and the majority of Baptist churches in the South were populated out of Sandy Creek. They came through Western North Carolina and started a church 204 years ago as a mission work that began to the Cherokee Indians. Wahoo. Are you listening? I pastored folks when I first started 22 years ago that when they were young men, they drove buckboard wagons to our church and tied their horses and mules up to a hitching post. Are you listening to me? The men wore overalls and were farmers. The ladies were housekeepers, mothers of children. Nobody had anything. So they weren't embarrassed to come to church and worship. Because everybody was just like they were. There wasn't nobody putting on no airs. There wasn't nobody out there with Mercedes. Or, and I, and listen, I, I don't care what you drive. I pray for our folks that God blesses them hand over fist as long as they tithe. And I'm not being funny. I'm not being foolish about that. I mean, man, be obedient and give tithes and offerings and support faith promise missions. I don't care. Praise God. I don't care if they got 10 Mercedes and a 20 car garage. Amen. I don't give a rip. But it's one thing for you to have things. It's another one things to have you. And when the things have got you so bad, you can't come in here and weep and let your mascara run. Amen. I mean, but you get in some places, the makeup's so thick. If they got to crying, it looked like somebody plowed furrows on their cheek. Everybody okay? Yeah. Why, why won't you worship? Why won't you? What is it? You afraid what brother so-and-so? Let me say brother so-and-so didn't keep you out of hell. And sister so-and-so didn't keep you out of hell. A friend, it was the Lord that saved you. It was the Lord that died for you. It was the Lord that shed his blood. And he's worthy. He's worthy of our praise. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that's within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Any of you ladies watch clothes today? Anybody? You did? You the only one? Well, it better not be an extended meeting. Well, nobody has no clean clothes, praise God. Let me ask you a question. When you got ready to wash clothes today, did you go outside and 
and and get about seven sticks of wood and put it put it in a fire pit and set you a fire and went down to the creek and got you some water and came in there and poured it in a poured it in a, a metal tub and got it good and hot. Then you went back in the house and come out there and stood out there in the cold over that fire and that hot water and wash your dishes. I mean wash your clothes. You didn't do that? Really? Or did, did you just go in your did you just go in there in your laundry room, heat and air conditioned laundry room, where you had an electric heat washer and dryer? And you pushed the button and the timer and went about your business. And the timer reminded you that it was done. You know what that is? That's a benefit. Y'all feel that heat running? That's a benefit. You know what I didn't, you know what I didn't, you know what I didn't hear when I got out of my truck and walked down through the parking lot? You know what I didn't hear? I didn't hear no, I didn't hear no horses neighing. And I didn't hear no mules braying. I didn't have to wipe something off my shoe as I walked through the parking lot. Hello? You say, what is that? A benefit. A benefit. Mr. Nate, can I borrow your hand for just a minute? Right there. Preacher, you know what that is? That's what a benefit feels like. Amen. Come here, Miss Sydney. You know what that is? That's what a benefit feels like. Amen. 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 Are you listening? Are you listening to me? Amen. You know what you listened to last night? A benefit. Sing about the goodness of God to you. Amen. You know what? You know what you're sitting by right there? A benefit. A benefit. You know what you're sitting in? A benefit. You know what you're holding? A benefit. You know where you're at? A benefit. You know that you're not going to hell? Benefit. You're a child of God? Benefit. You live in a home? Benefit. You got godly children? Benefit. You got a godly wife? Benefit. You got the Holy Ghost? Benefit. You got heaven is your home a benefit I'm telling you we're surrounded by the benefits of God we ought to bless the Lord amen benefits that's your friend cousin you know what that is benefit benefit you know what you were testifying about a benefit Amen. Sitting by benefits. I told him, listen, he may not be perfect. Ain't none of us are. Amen. All us men are a work in process. Amen. Sometimes it's a slow process. But does he love you? Is he faithful? He goes to work and supports your family. Loves you. Loves her. Benefit. Peace in your home, benefit. Call to preach, benefit. Unction when you do, a real good benefit. Amen. A 14 year old boy that get on a piano and do his best to fill a spot, that's a benefit. Amen. I said, Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And forget not all his benefits. The reason we can't say, the reason we won't get up, we forgot his benefits. We've got used to them. We don't give them a second look. God help, he said, bless the Lord and forget not all his benefits. A preacher was visiting Yellowstone. Last year we visited Yellowstone. My wife and I and my boys. We've always wanted to go ride snowmobiles but in Yellowstone and out there. And last year was our last Christmas together, just us, before my oldest got married and we went out there. And we, man, you talking about cold. Dear time. We got up on the last morning we were there. It was 45 below zero. We got up to one place, it's called Two Tops, 
And my youngin had, had wore his sunglasses and we should have had goggles. But I, he took his glasses off and he had icicles in his eyelashes. <laughs> Literally. He said, Daddy, how much further is This is the skinny one. And I was cold. I mean, he's got like R15 insulation. I got that R45 blown in, friend, like blown in. So tight you can't run the wires down the wall that's blown in so good. You can put your finger at his belly, bone, belly button, touch his backbone. He's so skinny. Y'all seen him. At, y'all, you play ball with him. I called him when you come in there and play ball. I said, Carter, you got to come play with this girl. She can play. Amen. I said, I'm on her team, and you can be too when your daddy's a camp moderator. Amen. That's the good thing about being the camp moderator. I'll be on whoever team I want to be on. Amen. Amen. We got out there, and we, and this preacher said, we traveled from a long distance to get there, and said they had a clock out there at Old Faithful that told how, how, how long it would be before it went off. All of a sudden, the announcement came off that came over the intercom that 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 old faithful was about to erupt, and everybody jumped up from their tables and whatever they were doing and ran outside to watch old faithful erupt. The preacher said, "I turned around and looked, and said, when everybody ran from the table, all the workers, all the servers." All the folks that started running to the table and getting drinks and getting dirty plates and, and going to work. And everybody in the, in the reception hall right there were doing their own thing. And the eruption went off and they never lifted up their head. Everybody else is running there like 10-year-old children. But those ones that are ever there every day never lift their head. You know why we have church? Because we're like the servers. We've been around it so long. We don't lift up our head and look at the benefits. Amen. I really like verse 10 of Psalm 103. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Somebody ought to say amen right there. In other words, when justice called, mercy answered. Amen. Amen. What'd you do today? Probably most of us did enough to get whooped. I didn't say get spanked. That's a whole different thing than getting spanked and whooped. Has a lot to do with the way you walk afterwards. And how you sit down afterwards. Somebody said, that's child abuse. Well, my daddy had to abuse me too many times. I got the point, praise God. Well, I got, I got the strap, amen, not the point. You've done enough today, but he ain't dealt with you according to your sins. Everybody okay? Look at Psalm 104, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Look at Psalm 105. O give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name, make known his deeds, verse 1, among the people. Amen. Look at Psalm 106, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Psalm 107, we were in it last night. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for his good, for his mercy endureth forever. Look at verse Psalm 111. Psalm 111, verse 1. Praise you the Lord. I'll praise the Lord with my whole heart. Where? Well, y'all wish I didn't know this verse. In the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. Does that not sound like church? Where should we praise God? Where should we praise the Lord? In church. Are you being obedient to the Bible? Have you opened your mouth tonight and said, man? Have you even murmured it under your breath? Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Psalm 112. Praise you the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Delighteth greatly in his commandments. Psalm 113. Praise you the Lord. Praise you, O you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. My. 
Look at Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications. Brother Mike, if I was preaching out of Psalm 116.1, I'd preach on, I know he heard my earnest prayer. Amen. Ain't that something to know? Amen. That when you pray, he hears you. What about it said when you pray, he doesn't ask if your daddy's with you. He doesn't ask if your daddy's a preacher. He doesn't ask if your daddy's a deacon. He doesn't ask if your mama's a preacher's wife. When you just say, Lord, he says, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Glory. Amen. Yeah. Psalm, Psalm 117. Oh, praise the Lord, all your nations. Look at Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he's good because his mercy endureth forever. Well, he said, let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. I'm not Israel. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. I'm not the house of Aaron. <laughs> but look at verse four. I'm glad I didn't get left out. Let them now that fear the Lord say his mercy endureth. I'm in that crowd. It's like that one song, I'm not in the martyrs and I'm not in the prophets, but here comes a group of sinners and he said, I can go in. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Notice, verse, notice verse 23, boy, I like this. This is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our... You know what y'all ought to praise God for? Last night, your preacher, before we left, he didn't say, I need to talk to you. We're struggling so bad, and ain't nobody coming. We're gonna need to we're gonna need to wall off half, half the sanctuary because we can't fill up what we got, and we can't pay the power bill. So we're just gonna close off half the sanctuary. Y'all hear him say? I didn't. I don't think I heard him say that. But I thought I heard him say there was 18 acres up there that we could buy for probably about a half a million dollars. And that there were some architectural plans that could probably, probably be, be drawn for about $6,500. In a day where many churches are contracted, you ought to thank God you got one that somebody wants to come to. You got a preacher that somebody wants to hear and say, praise God. It's is marvelous. This is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in our eyes. Amen. Well, one nineteen is a good chapter. Amen. Look at Psalm, look at Psalm one thirty three. Verse one: Behold, how good and how blessed is it for the brethren to dwell together in unity. Psalm one thirty four: Behold, bless you the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Hmm. Psalm 135, one, praise ye the Lord, praise the name of the Lord, praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. Ye that stand in the house of the Lord and the courts of the house of God, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Good night. Amen. Hey, I'm not the sharpest tack in the box. You think he's trying to tell us something? Maybe how we ought to act at church? Mm. My soul. Psalm 138, I'll praise the be with my whole heart. Psalm 140, deliver me. 142, I cried. 144, blessed, blessed be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. 145, I will extol thee, my God, O King. How bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His generation is unsearchable. Now here we go. The Lord's about to close the hymn book of our King James Bible. He's about to bring it to a close. Now I want you to notice these last chapters. Somebody tell me what the first verse of Psalm 146 said. Help me. Amen. Praise God. But look at here. Tell me what the last words of that chapter are. What about 147? What's the first words? What's the last words of 147? 
What about 148? How does he close 148? How does he open 149? How does he close 149? How does he open 150? Boy, look at verse 6 of Psalm 150. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Everybody help me. Do this. Everybody get a breath? Sounds like to me we ought to all be praising God. Amen. First Thessalonians says, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning the preacher. No, I didn't say that. In everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for the youth directors or the deacons or the preacher's wife or the Sunday school teachers. But it said, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Ephesians 5 said, giving thanks for all things. Not in all things, for all things. I'll just be honest with you. When my, doc, my mom died after 10 years of Alzheimer's, I had a hard time learning how to thank God for Alzheimer's. Especially when she couldn't remember my name anymore. But it's still in the book. Psalm 103 said, Bless the Lord, my soul, and with all that is in me. Bless his soul. So I guess I should do it in everything, for everything, and with everything. You know what? There should have been a few more of us that... You know what, today the preacher and I fellowship, he was thanking God for his church family. How much he loved preaching. You love missions. You love his family. You love church. You love preachers. You love serving God. You know what he was doing? He was thanking God for you. Amen. Amen. What you ought to thank God for. I told you last night, some of you men ought to look at your wife and thank God for it. Some of you stood there like a bump on a log, like a totem pole. She should have lit you up on the way home if you didn't. <laughs> now, y'all didn't like that, did you? You don't love me? You're not thankful for me? That's what she said. Amen. I, I just can't believe you tell my wife. If you ain't got enough sense when somebody tells you, thank God for the greatest blessing in your life outside the Bible and the Holy Ghost, you ought to, somebody ought to say something to you. But I'm just not, I'm just not emotional. I done laid the groundwork for that. Well, 2009. Oh, run up there and get me one of them. One of the metal chairs right there. 2009, I was preaching in Pickens, South Carolina. Don't let what I said about you lie. That was tongue in cheek. Don't get nervous and want to kick me out on my head. Some of you need to smile. Amen. Merry heart doeth good like a medicine. I was in 2009. I was at your kids have met the, the some of the folks from Sinai, Mount Sinai. Brother Rudy Smith is the pastor. I think he's somewhere around 40, been the pastor of Mount Sinai for 47 years. And I'm talking about, man, can, he's like a church of God woman. He, he combs his hair and sprays it down. And man, when he gets to preaching, he'll shake it down. I said, you like them Pentecostal women that get out there worshiping and shout their bobby pins out. I said, I know when God's got on you, you've shouted your hair down, praise God. You've got to hear him, Brother Doug. Preacher man, I'm talking about 70 years old, can preach a pain off the wall. The Lord blessed us. We had a nine-week revival meeting. 110 people got saved. 
There were nights in the meeting when there would be people from five or six different states. Church didn't start until 7.30. And there were nights when I, I would drive up and by the time I got there at, at 15, 6 or 6 o'clock, the parking lot already half full. Stay in the service an hour and a half. I'm talking about, there was one man, one night he got under conviction on Thursday night. And, and the man on Friday night, the choir, he got good. And I got to exhorting during the choir singing. And I saw a man come into the foyer. And the doors were open. He just, he came literally, bro. Mikey came running down the middle of the aisle. And I'm thinking, and he's mad at me. You know, I'm thinking, man, what did I say to make you mad? So I, I sort of got, I got in that middle linebacker stance like, I'm preaching like this. I'm like, man, if you hit me, it's going to be a bad day. I mean, I've got, I've got, you know, I'm like, and Brother Mike, he ran to me, and right, he, he took a right to the left turn, fell in that altar and got saved. He worked second shift. He got under conviction the night before in the meeting. He worked the weekend shift. He told his boss at supper, he said, I've got, to, he said, you may fire me, but I've got to go to church. I'm going to hell, and I've got to get back down there to that meeting to get saved. In his, in his factory uniform come running down there and got born again Amen. are you listening I mean good night it was on eight men called to preach young lady surrendered to go to the mission field one of those Friday nights and it was slow, the meeting was slow to get started and man there for just a little while the kids would get to singing they got to sing that God's been good in my life I've been blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep. And man, they, those youngins get up there and sing that, and it's like God rolled back the heavens and just started pouring out the glory. And there for just a minute, the only people in the place praising God were in wheelchairs. Brother Rudy's wife sat right here by him, and she sat right here. She had tried to take her life in a, in a season of depression, and she sat right by him. Right across the way, there was another lady that was new in the meeting that night. She was, in a, she was in a wheelchair. And then right beside her was a young man by the name of Wayne. He was in a wheelchair. His hands twisted so bad, his fingers were turned out. He, he was in that wheelchair. and he, he couldn't talk. He had a machine that he could push the buttons. Seat belted in. And he got to moving around. And if you don't think I'm telling you the truth, you call Dr. Rudy Smith and ask him, ask them other 500 people that's in that meeting. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you the gospel truth. He's sitting in his wheelchair, hands twisted, seat belt, Mr. Nett, seat belt buckled him in. He said he got, to, he got to moving around, and I thought, he got my attention. I'm like, something's wrong. And I watched him for a minute. And he got his fingers over and he got a hold of that buckle on that seat belt in that wheelchair. And he unbuckled that seat belt. And I saw him take his hands and pull the straps down onto his side. And I watched him put his Bible down beside his, beside his leg. And I watched him scoot out to the front. He, his little legs were paralyzed and turned. He scooted his bottom out to the front of that seat and sat up. And as God is my witness, he got on the front of that seat and he fell out on the floor like this. And in that church, the, the, the altar's about four times as wide as this. And as God is my witness, preacher, that crippled boy, 25 years old, he army crawled with his arms and pulled his body underneath the communion table. He was literally, Brother Mike, he was laying under the communion table. And I thought, if a man's going to make that kind of effort to get to the altar, I'm going to get in there with him because I want to hear what he's got to say. You can ask Brother Rudy. I got in there beside him, and Brother Rudy got in there beside me, and I'm not making fun. I'm not. I would never do that. But I want to bring you to the reality of how tired his body was and his tongue. And as I lay there, preacher, under that, under that communion table, that boy just literally, his legs would not move. He crawled on his arms and drug his paralyzed body underneath that table. And this is what it, this is what it sounded like. He said, 
God, you've been good to me. If I would have not hurt him, I would have picked him up and took a lap around the building. Literally. I was that full. I probably was full enough that I could have done it and not hurt him. I'm, I done get the glory, he done get the honey bucket over in my heart. And I thought, dear God, a man with a, with a catheter in and a, tar, a tied tongue and, and legs, that won't, legs that won't move and a body that won't function and a tongue that's tied. If he can crawl under a communion table and say, God, you've been good to me. Can I ask you something tonight? What's your excuse and what's my excuse? Uh, we've got health. Uh, we're, going not, we're going to heaven, not going to hell. God's blessed your home. He's given you strength to work. He's saved your children. He's given you a voice to sing. He's given you the dreams that you've prayed for. What is our excuse? What is our excuse? Well, preacher, you know, I don't want to be a charismatic. Well, I've heard that excuse long enough. You know what? Baptist folks was praising God long before 1902 when that charismatic woman spoke in tongues in California. Amen. Ephesians 5, 18 was long in the book before some charismatic, uh, listen, uh, listen, took that and made it into something that it's not. Amen. I don't think you can be filled with the Holy Ghost and not thank you. Amen. I don't think you walk in the spirit and not have an attitude of gratitude. That Christian boy, and I'm telling you it happened as God is my witness it happened. And the other 500 people in that meeting, if he would get in there with his tied tongue and say, God, you've been good you know where he's at tonight? In heaven. In heaven. And you know what he's saying tonight? You've been good to me. There ain't no stutter. There's no tied tongue. There's no body that doesn't work. There's no fingers that are turned sideways. There's no catheter in. And they're not having to push him around. He's running the street saying, you've been good to me. Oh, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive honor and power and glory. That's what he's doing tonight. What do you think it's going to be when she gets to heaven? And she gets to sing Amazing Grace for the first time with a loosed tongue and a loosed mind and a loosed body. I'd like to be around for that. You say, what you gonna do? I'm gonna shout her on. You better believe it. How many of us Ought to take a time out tonight. Don't come ask him for anything. Don't come ask him to lift a burden. Don't come ask him to pay a bill. Don't come ask him to give you direction. I think we're, I think we're hypocrites if we come and ask him for something when we've not thanked him for what he's already done. Old brother Robbie Mullinax from 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 Tabernacle that does that Chinese Bible project. Every once in a while I'll get with him in a meeting and he'll sing that old song. Until I've thanked him for what he has done. Some of your daddies ought to get your wife and your children and say tonight as a family we're going to go tell the Lord thank you. And sir, 
let your wife hear you thank God for her. Mom and dad, let, let your children. You say, well, preacher, that embarrassed my teenagers. They need to be embarrassed. Let your children hear you thank God for them. Thank you for your Bible. Thank you for your church. Thank you for the Spirit of God that lives in you. For one moment, for one night, forget what he hasn't done yet. Amen. And take a minute and say, Lord, thank you for what you've done. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.